Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. It's the middle of the late afternoon and we are doing uh, the start of our playthrough series on the Santiago Campaign, 1898, in Paper Wars Magazine number 102. Uh, we are not going to do a full play-by-play -play of every single move like we've often done in the past. Uh, I've got too much coverage to do before the end of the year, uh, so we're going to do bits and pieces, show illustrative stuff, um, you know, maybe occasionally do a key battle um, where we, you know, play through and dice through part of it, but for the most part it'll be sort of like uh, updates um, of progress in the game. So I'm going to take a look here at the map. Uh, we can see the Spanish are laid out in defense here. Uh, the American beachhead is going to be down here at Daiquiri. Um, we're using the historical setup. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the non-historical setup in a little bit, but uh, these units here, they have their choice of being between Siboney, uh, Fermeza, and Sevilla, in or adjacent to those spots. Uh, over here, there's a couple guys that can be uh, in, in three different hexes along here. We've got San Juan Hill here and Kettle Hill here. These guys have to be within that. <laughs> this one unit and the Spanish leader, Vara del Rey, have to be here or here. Now, this is an important uh, Forte El Viso, a redoubt, and El Caney is a very critical spot. <laughs> and I have one leader and one unit between these two, which is kind of problematic. I'm starting the leader here because a leader by himself. Um, when an enemy moves next to him, they can move to an adjacent stack. So he'll get to choose to pop to here or here, depending on what happens. Now, these green guys up here are the Cubans. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit here. I'll, I'll talk a bit about, about the Cuban setup. There is no historical Cuban setup. And uh, it's going to vary widely depending on whether you do the historical Spanish setup or the non-historical. Again, I I'll talk more about that, but uh, right now I've got the Spanish. I'm going to turn here. Or the Cubans, excuse me. Set to try to do some marauding <laughs> here in these uh, victory point. They're, they're victory objectives so that the U.S. are trying to capture. Those, those are the Spanish flags, but that's what the Americans are trying to capture. And they have to have at least four to have a chance to win. And it really needs to include El Caney. But if you have five or six objectives, it's possible the Americans win without El Caney. Uh, taking Santiago by itself does not win for you, except on turn 15. If the Americans have won through turn one through 14, by, by the uh, victory um, objectives, they can win that way. But on turn 50, the only way they can win is by occupying uh, Santiago by the end. And if they don't, they lose. Uh, the Spanish can win if they take over the American uh, logistical base. Uh, I'll go over some. There's, there's a lot of problems with these rules, folks. Um, there's errata. And the errata do not clear up everything. Um, <laughs> in one case, it adds confusion. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit here. So finishing the Spanish setup way over there in this corner. That's the Escario column. It doesn't show up until turn four. It might not arrive until turn five. There's a random events table, and there is an event that might delay this unit. These guys here, uh, let's see, it's um, uh, Socapa and El Moro. Let's see, 1705 El Moro. 
there's there's a battery the El Morio and then there's the Castillo the El Morio so uh, these units here must start here they cannot move until a random event releases them uh, in the random non-historical setup these guys still have to sit up here but the Spanish has a much freer reign where um, yeah right to, to put stuff where they want to and that's important there's one other unit sitting here off the map. This is a machine gunner unit. This can sh can be activated because of a random event. And it shows up in or adjacent to Santiago. All right. So, so these guys can't move. Uh, let's see. So there's some guys in Santiago. And next to it, engineers, this is their, their naval unit. Uh, you can do naval support four hexes away. Um, basically, the naval unit just stays in Santiago Harbor and can 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 add. Uh, not not if you can't use it defensively, but you can use it offensively to add uh, five factors. Um, when you're in a shock battle, uh, the Americans also have a naval unit right now is off the map um so let's take a look over here at this part of the map i'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so this stack of guys is what the americans can start bringing on these are supposed to land between turn one and four um now they're limited to six steps at a time like this stack here, these are all two step units. So they could bring six of them on in, in a turn. Some of these are one step units. This is twos and ones. This 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 marker here labeled beachhead. <clears throat> That's the logistical base marker that I mentioned. It is the American supply source. Uh, for extending supply inward. Now, the fact that they say beachhead on the counter, say beachhead in the rule book, where they mention these here, but everywhere else they refer to it as the logistical uh, base marker, the, the LBM. Um, <laughs> yeah, so right there, confusion, right? Thank you for the confusion. Um, the poorly written not obviously not edited rule book uh you cannot blame it on the designer this design was originally like i think 2003 i think uh it's like 20 years later uh <laughs> uh and according to the developer the, the lead developer this game was totally redeveloped someone asked what are the difference between those totally redeveloped now that means all the onus for the mistakes are base are are basically to the mm, lead developer. It was a code co development. Ty Bomba and Robert Smith, but you know, Ty is obviously the lead. Uh, well, you know, where's the final buck? Well, this is a magazine game, right? So maybe it's in the editor. Right? I mean, the publisher. Bill Thomas, he's the publisher of all of Compass Games, but this is the magazine, so I don't know. So in some sense, the buck stops with Bill or the project manager. I don't know if there was a separate project manager other than the editor. The, who's the editor of the magazine? Ty Bomba. Uh, so there's a little problem here. <laughs> now, I don't want to rant about that too much right now, but one of the reasons I decided not to resubscribe to Paper Wars Magazine is in this current subscription available... Three out of the four titles are Ty Bomba titles, and I do not believe that the editor of a magazine should be picking his own titles <laughs> as they designed, potentially developing them. I'm not sure if he's doing the full development or not. It, it, it's a mess. Anyway, I'll stop ranting about that. Let's go back to the U.S. All right. Now, there's these beaches here, and technically in any beach square, square, space, hexagon the americans are in supply now you're supposed to be able to trace two hexes 
to a supply source directly or two hexes to a railroad or road that traces back to your logistical source. The Spanish logistical source is Santiago. So the Spaniards are in supply anywhere within two hexes of a railroad or a road or within two, every, every space that's within two of Santiago is pretty much almost a railroad <laughs> or, or, or square within them. You, you can't trace that railroad uh, across enemy units like a zone. There's no zones in this game. There's no mention of a zone, no definite, but there are limitations on supply uh, from the, the enemy uh, adjacent to the enemy. Um, now, In one place they say that supply affects movement and combat, and then other else they clarify it only affects combat. <laughs> you're halved, round down, if you're not in supply. Um, but they, there's obviously, you know, <laughs> some rules discrepancy. The Rata covered that. Um, but you know, someone had some questions on Board Game Geek, and they answered uh, those questions. Uh, that pointed out there's a lot of things that were uh, problematic. It did not address like the naming of this, which it should have. Um, it did address that this unit here, that you can count, it says SD on the side there. That's the signals detachment. Now, that unit has balloons. <laughs> User, it's, it, it's called the, the balloon unit here, right? So that was left behind. It's the signal detachment. They referred to it elsewhere as the signal detachment unit. But sometimes where in the like the jungle movement special rules, they talk about a balloon mode. That's part of the right. Like, no, it shouldn't be there. But the fact that they still called this here, there's a lot of places where there's... <sighs> they didn't <laughs> edit these. <laughs> and I honestly think they didn't play test them. Wait, they didn't play... Well, <laughs> notoriously under play to the magazine game. If you notice here, who playtested? There's only three playtesters listed, and two of them are the co-designers, Ty Bamba, Robert Smith. Those are the developers. They're also So Carl Graver is the only outside playtester. Now, maybe there were more, but they didn't put them on there. They should have, but to me this looks like <laughs> you have to playtest rules, and you have to have someone who has never heard about the game before and learns them and plays them from the rules. If you are not doing that, and every time you change any part of the rules, you must get fresh blood to replay test with the new rules by themselves. No help, no explanation. That's how you play test something, folks. Okay, so meandering Mike, meandering, ranting. All right, so let's get back to this. So every turn, the Americans can land 12 stacking points, 12 steps. So almost all of their infantry, I believe, well, yes, all their infantry, other than like this machine gunner unit, they have two steps. Uh, three of their cavalry have two steps. One just has one step. Their artillery batteries have one step. All right. To bring their logistical base marker, the beachhead marker, the supply source marker, okay, six, six steps. So on the very first turn, if they wanted to land this, they could only land six steps and this. Or they could elect to land 12 steps the first turn. They cannot move the turn that they land, right? Now, in a, in a totally free setup, the Spanish could try to choke this area off. <laughs> and if they can't expand out a little bit to get some room, uh, that can be problematic. The thing is, there's a good reason if you've got the free setup to not put too much over here and put more over here. We'll talk about those. Those Cubans, the green guys, are going to do some nasty things the first turn. They're very limited as to where they can set up, but there are a bunch of objective readout squares 
around here. And there's no zones of control. And yeah, I'll get to that soon. <laughs> um, I don't think the game <laughs> was play tested enough mechanically too. At least I don't know, the the historical setup versus what the Cubans could do. I don't. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. All right. So you're supposed to be able to trace two to a supply source, or two to a rail or road that leads to your supply source. Now the only thing that makes sense in the historical one is you got to drop your logistical base here, okay? Because this is the only ones that are connected. Well, if they weren't here, in the non-historical, you could land at Saboni, okay? But they've got all these guys here. You can't. You have to land here. And then there's a whole bunch of more. These guys can start coming in here on turn three or later. I just have them piled up in front of the turn three marker, the turn three space. Uh, they can sh sh land at Saboni or Daiquiri. You know, if if Saboni, Saboni, if if it's U.S. occupied, they can land there. So they can start landing in either of these. Um, so if the Americans can push here, or if the Spanish decide to abandon that or not, I wouldn't abandon it. <laughs> you know, in a you know the free setup, I might start less out here to have more better protecting around Santiago. But, um, yeah, we'll get back to that. <laughs> I keep mentioning that. But, uh, so, it's, it's a, it, it says that the U.S. U.S. units are in supply on any beach. So if they're sitting on a beach, they're in supply. Now, it does not say any beach space counts as U.S. supply source. It's as if they're on it. So I do not interpret the rule to say that you can be two spaces away from any beach and be in supply. If I go by the wording of the rules as it is, it's either you're on a beach as the U.S. or you're within two of a railroad that reaches back to your logistical base marker, your, your supply source, which is either going to be Daiquiri or here. No, it's, it, it can't really be here in the historical setup. It just won't work. Um, but in the question that the person asked about the rules interpretation and the answer from the developer, they were saying is like, uh, the logistic base marker only works in here or here if you want to be more than two away. And the way he was asking it, he was sounding like he, he was wanting to say, I can be two away from any beach. But if I want to be farther out where it's two away from any railroad, that means you have to put the logistical beach mark on one of these two because no other beach has a railroad going into it. Okay. And the developer said, yes. Or he, the guy said, this this case or this case? And he says, yeah, the latter one. Which sounds like he was agreeing that you could trace two to a beach. That's not the way the rule is written. So again, either the rule was bad, <laughs> improperly written, or the developer was not taking enough time to th think of the logical implication of what he was agreeing to in the person's, here's my question, here's two options, all right? Um so definitely the Americans are in supply in any beach, but whether they should be in supply two away from any beach, I don't think in most cases it's going to matter. Um, right. So, and that's, that's, that's open to debate when you use the historical setup the way it's written, it 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 sounds like historical setup. You're only landing at Daiquiri and or Saboni, not on any other beach. 
Whereas in the general rules, U.S. landings, says he can only land in beach hexes. If judge land units, they may be placed in a beach hex empty of Spanish units. Uh, so it sounds like in subsequent turns, you could land other places here. But once you've moved off, you wouldn't be in supply unless you allow the two or not. I don't know. So that's something that still needs clarification. Uh, for right now, I'm going to play it that you're in supply on the beach. But if you're, like, say, here, you wouldn't be in supply because it's two-way. And the, the, the rule is written as I interpreted, and I don't trust the dev's answer to the question that he really understood the implications always asking. Anyway, so that's meandering too much on that point. Uh, so let's go to the Cubans now. Cubans. They have to set up within four of Santiago. So one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. That's these are within four. They have to set up in a clear or hill. So not jungle. And the reason they can't set in the jungle, you know, since oh, the, these are Cuban guerrillas fighting against the Spanish, they cannot set up in any hex that has a railroad or a road. All right. So all the jungles within four of Santiago have railroad, and so they can't. I can't sit about here, here. It's too far away. Does that really make sense to me? No. <laughs> the the gorillas, the Cuban gorillas, should be able to set up anywhere that's not next to a road. Or, you know, historically, maybe, oh, they were mostly concentrated. They'd gathered near Santiago in safe gathering spots. So you could say... Yeah, you know, of the, what is it, uh, eight units that six of them have to be within four of Santiago, but let them put somewhere else, you know, maybe they want some over here to try, knowing that the Americans are going to land somewhere on the beaches to try to help them out or something, or maybe on this side here, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, but so, so they, ha they have to, whether it's the historical or non-historical setup, there is no defined historical setup for the, the Cubans other than it says in the setup, they must be within four hexes of Santiago. They must be in clear terrain or a hill. They must not be in a railroad or road hex. And they cannot start adjacent to a Spanish unit. All right. So that means they can't start, you know, here. They can't start in here. Um, it would be nice here. Like here's a entrenchment hex they could start there uh however given that the u.s cuban joint turn happens first and there's no zone of controls in this game the cubans can jump into a bunch of these victory condition hexes, including these ones near santiago with readouts, uh, they can run in here. Now, the fact you know, like these two guys, this one leader and this one Spanish battalion, have to set up. You know, that's all. <laughs> so, so in the non-historical setup, you're gonna set up more here for certain. Especially El Caney, El Caney losing El Caney. The the Americans take El Caney. The there's a bonus to the roll for the chance that the Spanish are going to start to give up and eventually give up. Okay. So, so there's a table where, depending on how many objectives that the U S have captured. Now, technically the Cubans capturing this are not the Americans capturing that, but they're holding it. They can keep the Spanish out. So as the Americans drive up, and the Cubans move before the U.S. do. So once they get close, and the Cubans haven't been destroyed and driven off by the Spanish, 
a Cuban can bug out and let the American just walk right in. So it seems to me the play is to grab as many of these objective hexes near and around Santiago. Uh, that says I'm starting that there. Just to, if if the if if I was like uh, wanting to be a little underhanded, I would cover up that readout and that flag. Maybe the person playing the U.S. Cubans doesn't realize. <laughs> it's a problem. These are nice big hexes, but these objective hexes, it would have been better to like maybe do a yellow and red border around them or something, or they're, they're with these size counters, if the counter's a little smaller, but the, the idea is have big hexes so that the big counters are easy to read. I like, I like the counters. They're nice and big, easy to read, but you end up covering up. So I'm trying to like, let it still be visible. Let's see if I zoom in there, you can see what I'm talking about a little better. See, so I'm trying to like not totally obscure so I can still see that, oh yeah, there's stuff there. Um, all right, so. This 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 is uh, <laughs> again talking about the Cubans. So potentially the Cubans here could occupy these and this, or it can walk up to here because there's no zones. Or they could try to jump on this and try to kill this engineer. Now he is in a a redoubt, but it's only one step. He only has one firepower, one shock, and because of the one shock, uh, they can get you no. Know, really good odds against him and his odds of shooting back for fire um now you know in a redoubt the redoubt is the best defense there is there's two two shifts on uh, the shock table for the defender's benefit um so the best you can normally get is a five to one let's take a quick look at that here all right let's zoom in Sorry, sort of for the sideways angle. Let's see, five to one maximum. Now, ignore the seven and the eight on the bottom there, yes, because that's hooey, that's baloney. <laughs> there are no die roll modifiers on the shock table. There's only shifts. There are die roll modifiers on the defensive fire table. But this whole thing down here is hooey. I don't know if once upon a time they had a die roll modifier instead of a shift, but they didn't get rid of it. That's 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 bad. Bad play testing, bad editing. You've introduced extraneous garbage, just confusion. Um, but in a readout, because you know best you can get is five one or greater with two shifts, boom. So there's still a chance of rolling a one and failing, but otherwise you're going to succeed. Now, given that there is no seven or eight, the only way to make a guy retreat is a five to one. There's no retreating in shock except a five to one. If the, the guy has one net shift on defense, you'll never force him to retreat. You can kill him. You know, if you get enough, uh, enough step losses, depending, you know, like most of this right now, is a light thin stacks sort of cover area and there can be you know stacking up bigger for critical fights later as as say you know if the Cubans have been dealt with um, the, the the Spanish can try to stack up to oppose the you know Americans coming in, so like right now, this is kind of spread out. Depending on where they go, the Cubans can try to stack up in, you know, Vermiza or Saboni. Now this has got a nice river around it, plus the town and the, the shifts are cumulative according to the chart. Uh, however... So it totally makes sense to have the cumulative adjustment for leaders, 
for river and the train in the hex. However, the way the <coughs> the way it's written here, there's a one shift for jungle or hill or town or city or entrenchment or battery. However, they have a separate one that says two for readout. The problem with that is there is one square space hex here. This one that I talked about, Fuerto El Viso, that is jungle and redoubt. So if you went by the literal statement there on that chart that says that they're cumulative, because they're two separate lines, you would get three shifts, two for the redoubt, one for the jungle. Now, if they were coming across the river, that would be another one. And if the leader was in there, that'd be another. That's just crazy talk, right? Um, I, I am going to rule <laughs> that redoubt supersedes the jungle. You don't add the redoubt and the jungle together to get three shifts. You get two shifts because of the redoubt. They still could get the river bonus if they were attacked exclusively across this side of the river. You potentially could get your leader bonus. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. Yeah. So, well, let's try to finish up here the, <laughs> the, the talking about the setup, the rules, the problems with the rules, um, the, 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 the misleading stuff, his statements in, in the rule. Definitely get the errata. It's on... Uh, board game geek. The yeah. Next time we'll talk about uh, the actual the, the combat system, the 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 multiple phase cyclical versus I go you go, but not yes and no. It's um, there's some messiness to it, and a supposed clarification actually makes it worse. But let's uh, talk about the. Before we actually, I'm going to move the Cubans and then we're going to stop. But the non-historical setup allows the Spanish much freer reign. So this unit, uh, the Brigada Naval, Brigada Naval, in in the free setup has to set up inner adjacent to Santiago. In the historical setup, it is asked to set up honor adjacent to 1310, which is way out here. Now, I, I set it up here because that's the objective hex and that's the readout, redoubt. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, the stupid, sneaky Kubans could not get into here. If they get in there, yeah, that's less important than making sure they don't get into that one. Um... Now the other requirement for the free the free setup, which is it's the way it's done here in in setup right here setup 3.0. This is the normal setup. It's the free setup. The historical setup is not the normal one. And you you remove you know, the es the escario column is off map. The machine gunner is off uh, off map. The uh, guys in uh, Socapa and El Moro, they're, they're in their spots. That Brigada Naval is, is in or adjacent to Santiago. And then anywhere else can go anywhere in the back, except you must have at least one in Santiago and one in each adjacent hexes to Santiago. Now, the historical setup does not follow that, right? This guy is supposed to be south of here in this hex. This guy has to be here. He's supposed to be in relation to this. I, I brought him here next to this. These guys in here, this guy here, these guys over here. These two guys, you know, like it's like here, here, or here. <laughs> and so this, this guy has to be here. So there's all these hexes, four that are not occupied. And, and technically, you know, they, they could do this or something. There could be up to five in the historical setup that are not <laughs> surround, not defending Santiago, but the 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 quote unquote free setup, which is the standard rules setup, 
requires you to have a unit in Senegal and one in each of these in hexes. So I think that's bad form to, to have your standard setup not cover the historical setup. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, maybe there should be a little more leeway of these guys here. Uh, you know, maybe because there was units over here, you know, of these units, you know, you must set up at least three of them over here, but the rest could be over here or something like that. Of these two, they can be here or one there, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but the fact that you're telling her, here's this requirement for the standard setup, which which isn't even close to being met by the historical setup. So that free setup, that standard but free setup should be an optional setup. Optional free setup, you know. Here's the historical setup. Maybe you add a little more variant. You know, the, the pure historical setup, the, the historical-based, you know, maybe a little better defense at Santiago setup, and then the totally free setup could be optional. But right now, the totally free setup is the standard, but it's, you know, it's like nowhere even close to the historical setup. The historical setup does not cover that standard setup. So I think there's a problem there. That should have been better play tested. That should have been better defined. So now that that's all been said, we're going to do the Cubans first uh, move. I'm not going to do the combat yet because we're already at 30. I knew this was going to be long rant talking about stuff. I was hoping for 30 minutes or less, but let me do the Cuban moves and then we will, uh, we will, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, We're gonna the plan here for for the, the Cubans in this game is to grab easy to defend objective hexes that they can eventually pass on to the Americans uh, and potentially try to choke and limit the ability of the Spanish to coordinate and maneuver well. Um So, and potentially take Santiago. I mean, there's only one step guy with two things. If they can get in here on the first turn before this guy does, <laughs> again, eh, they don't lose automatically. Well, they do. They'll, they'll be out of supply. Everyone will be out of supply. They don't, you don't lose automatically if you lose Santiago. But no one will be on supply. <laughs> so they'll all be attacking in half. So, so we're going to do this and show how ridiculous this is. All right. So three. Again, there's no zones of control. There's no no cost to move negative. You don't have to stop. <laughs> um, so they're going to move here. This guy has to decide where is he going to go. Well, they definitely don't want to lose El Caney. Oh, shoot. That guy is going to be out of supply. Because you can't go this way. Because, <laughs> oh, you can't see that. Technically, they don't connect. No. You could say, ah, we're going to use sensibility rule. Those connect over there somewhere off map. And I could trace here. As long as... Uh, yeah. But, well, no, they're, they're going to... They're going to... It is not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Jeez. This is a mess. Uh, that's a big six, two, two. Ah. Hmm. No, it's critical that if they do take this... Even if they're, they've got to try to get in there and push them out. So he, they need the leader here. Um, oh, and by the way, by the way, oops, you're not seeing that, sorry. Cubans are always in supply. This is why they can do this. They don't care. So that was, uh, they were starting here. That one went here. Uh, one, two, three. It's two to go into the 
the forest. Now, the U.S. guys, when they enter the forest, they have to roll on a chart to see if they get lost. <laughs> they can stop prematurely or they can get lost and, and be moved by the enemy. And, uh, you know, if you have the the signals detachment, quote unquote, the balloon unit next to you, you get a bonus to less likely to get lost. And if you're next to a gorilla unit, you're less likely to get lost. But yeah, there's this kind of silly chrome that if the <laughs> U.S. moves into a jungle hex, you got to roll. Now, I personally would have simplified that and just say Americans have to stop if they enter the jungle. Um, it takes three movement points instead of two. And, uh, you know, if if they are next to a, the SD unit or a gorilla, then it's only two. Something like that. I Rolling, uh, yeah, yeah. That seems like kind of ridiculous girl, but it, it, some people love it. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash on that too much. I just think sometimes that kind of chrome is mm, not necessary, but all right. So down here, all right, got to decide <laughs> one, two, three, going to take this fort, <laughs> going to be pounding on it. And the fact that, uh, they're actually surrounding Santiago now. Ah, uh, yes, good old supplies. Oh, and sometimes in the rules they say, refer to this section, and it's like, oh, no, no, it's, it's not, you know, like, see, 10.2. No, it's 10.3 or something, you know. Uh, they have the numbers wrong. Um, any length. Uh, line of communication may not pass into or through enemy-occupied hexes. Uh, wasn't there something being next to it? It's by making a trace a path of one or two X's when it's owned to a rail or road, which is in turn is connected by a path of any length leading back to supply source to the line. May not pass into or through it. Okay, it's only enemy occupied, not adjacent. All right, so you gotta you gotta cut those railroad lines. So ideally, if he could have gotten here, um, then you, you're cutting this, you're cutting that. Uh, so, <laughs> so it does sort of make this one critical. That cuts this. Well, this path. Um, see, I was thinking of, of hopping and doing something here, but I think trying to take this, that's uh, a critical type thing. Um, yeah. Six shock one two three three yep two yeah if you take if you take Santiago it's all over anyway um so yeah so there there's the there's the plan folks um trying to trying to wreak havoc havoc cause damage in terms of getting in the way, trying to break the supplies, um, force the Spanish to, to push them out. The fact that there's a unit over here, the whole Escario column comes on this side uh, of the map, the west side, turn four or five, depending on a random event. Eventually he can move. These are guys are all going to be out of supply. You know, if they hook up and around here, they can come in, but still there's no supply there right now well potentially supply could come out this way these guys if they're not they could potentially next turn cut this railroad this way uh all, all sorts of thoughts um try to kill this guy um getting here and then next turn potentially you know <laughs> be like this uh 
the Spanish will ha <laughs> would have to attack. Uh, total, total mess, total, total messy nightmare. But it, it's like it's it's <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Personally, how many mo most gamers in a, in, in, a, in a magazine called Paper Wars that's got historical articles? They're gonna see a historical setup. Historical setup. Let me zoom out. And they're probably gonna want to do this first. Historical setup. Historical setup. Yeah, that's where did they where did they start? Where did they set up? Let's do the historical setup. And then, oh, is there an optional limit? No. Well, <clears throat> so there's a good reason why that setup rule in the main rule section says you better have guys next to every square of Santiago. Otherwise, this can happen. Um, <laughs> but technically, with the free setup, you might be able to actually block every space that the Cubans would normally start in. <laughs> I don't think it addresses what if there's no space where the Cubans can start? You know, so again, uh, I ramble, I'm griping. I love I love Compass games, I do. But I got a problem with underdeveloped magazine games. Obviously under play tested, under proofread, under edited of the rules. Um but we'll give it our best spot. I obviously, you know, we'll have to play this again after, you know, things might go really south for the Spanish early on here. But I'm not going to do that battle now. So stay tuned for the Cuban turn, the, their, their battle turn. We'll explain how the combat works. Uh, defensive fire, shock, um, and, and some ambiguities in the rules and the supposed errata clarification. Um, so this is Meandering Mike, Man Cave of Madness. We have been discussing... The Santiago Campaign, Paper Wars number 102, uh, and this was designed by Javier Romero, again, I believe, uh, the, it was originally published in a Spanish language magazine, uh, Soldados, meaning, you know, Soldiers, um, I think it was 2003, so like 20 years later. And supposedly totally redeveloped, quote unquote, Ty Bomba in VGG. <laughs> totally redeveloped, totally re underdeveloped. I mean, just, just be honest, folks. It's obviously, obviously, obviously underdeveloped, underplay tested, underproofed. Otherwise, those, I mean, I, yeah, I, I totally get that any game, most games are going to have some errata. But the kind of mistakes that are in here are things that just simple proofreading would have catch. Oh, wait a minute, you're calling it this here and this there. And oh, this this thing this thing, you know, doesn't have a die roll modifier but goes up to eight. How's that possible? We're rolling a die six, you know, things like that. Absolutely should have been caught before this got published. Just no question. So the whole setup thing, historical versus that, you know, uh, well, maybe you shouldn't have included the historical setup without a caveat, right? Warning, this historical setup, you know, <laughs> is really bad. If there's a KG uh, Cuban gorilla, you know, the that, that, that play there, it just, yeah, it just, you know, there should have been limits on what the Cuban gorillas could do. Or the Spanish should have had more defense there, or something like me. You know, maybe the the Cuban girls wouldn't have been that bold to actually try to on their own tax Santiago the first turn. But given the setup, it totally makes sense to do so. It absolutely makes sense. This 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 is the win right here. If you can succeed, you know, in getting your butt into Santiago, cutting all the Spanish out of supply, and their odds of retaking it are going to be really bad. Uh, yeah. So anyway, again, I ramble. It's almost at 50 minutes. Let's make sure we stop for this. So all you good folks out there, take care. Enjoy your, your magazine games. Read the articles, but 
Carefully scan the rules. Take care and ciao.